Hey, Dr. Bernard here. This is medicine. It's for muscle aches and pains, and you apply it to the skin. There's a label on the box that's required by law here in the United States, and it tells you how to take it. It says apply to affected area. If the area is not affected, might not want to apply it there, just like this patient will find out. I make a new video every month, so if you hit subscribe and the bell to get notifications, we can read all the references to subject matter and related cases linked in the description below together. A boy rubbed an entire tube of pain relief cream on all the parts in between his legs. This is what happened to his brain. CG is a 16-year-old boy presenting to the emergency room with abdominal pain, headache, and polyuria. Poly meaning many and urea referring to urine. He was urinating excessively. Earlier the day before, CG was with his friends. They like to make fun of where they lived. It's a boring place. Nothing ever happens, but this time they were going to make something happen. One of the friends, Jake, had recently strained his neck when he slept funny one night. Looking for some kind of therapy, Jake found pain relief cream. He heard it had some medicine in it, but it's also minty. You'll feel a burn. You'll focus on that burn and you won't feel the pain anymore. Jake applied some of this cream on his neck and then right after he had to use the bathroom. The hand that applied the cream made contact with all the parts in between his legs. Immediately after putting his pants back on, Jake could feel his groin go from ice cold to burning hot as he spent the next 30 minutes in a world of hurt to the point where he felt nauseous. If there's a way to get someone to rub a whole tube of this cream in between their legs, it'll be the funniest thing I'll ever see, he thought. One day, while everyone was hanging out, Jake ate a piece of three-week-old pizza, and that pizza came right back up. As the friends laughed in his face, he felt embarrassed, but then he seized the opportunity. He challenged them. Eat a piece of the pizza, or rub a tube of this pain relief cream in between your legs. One or the other, otherwise you're not leaving my house. Clearly, this was a nonsense game played by a group of bored teenagers, but they were determined. One of the friends ate the pizza while the others watched, and that pizza came right back up. Pain relief cream is just minty lotion, the other friends said. They use it in hospitals all the time, so it's safe for everyone, as CG opened the tube. Immediately after slathering a handful of the cream on all the parts in between his legs, CG wasn't sure what he was feeling. It felt cold, not really that uncomfortable at first, but then the burn started to settle in. As the minutes passed, he felt like someone had put a blowtorch to his groin and started searing it like a steak. As the pain intensified, he started to panic. The friends said that even more cream will help neutralize it, because if there's too much cream in the area, none of it can absorb into the skin, so this is totally like an antidote to itself. But then the hurt got worse as he rubbed the rest of the tube in. As CG tried to wash it off, it burned even more. Everything was red and irritated. He felt like there was a chemical burn on his groin feeding into his rear. As the hour continued, the pain started to fade. At first, it seemed like everything was over, but then CG started to feel like the air coming out of his nose was hotter than normal. He laid down on the floor, and everyone noticed that he was gasping for air. He didn't realize that he was breathing this way, because when someone asked, he had no idea that he was doing it. As the hours passed, a high-pitched ringing started playing in his ears that wouldn't go away, and the music the friends were playing in the house started shifting in pitch. His chest was pounding, his arms and legs felt weak, he would urinate every couple minutes like he had chugged gallons of water, but he didn't drink anything. When he went to the bathroom to empty his stomach, the friends thought something was wrong. CG didn't eat the pizza, but as they find him laying down in a crooked and twisted position on the floor, they call for 911, and he's brought to the emergency room where we are now. Bengay Ultra Strength is a mixture of camphor and menthol, both of which are responsible for the cool, then warm sensation when applied topically, but this formulation also has 30% methyl salicylate. This is related to aspirin, known as acetyl salicylic acid, which in the body, they both become the same salicylate. This anti-inflammatory is the reason why it's in the cream for pain. These derivatives are some of the most common over-the-counter medicines. Pepto-Bismol for stomach ailments is bismuth subsalicylate, and even some face washes have salicylic acid, and it's the salicylate causing all of CG's problems, but the medical team don't know that. He's too embarrassed to tell anyone what he did. This will probably pass on its own, he thought, so he just tells the doctors that he hasn't been feeling well. At examination, doctors noticed that CG was responsive, so nothing was wrong with his brain, at least not yet. His breathing
breathing and his heart rate were fast, but his lungs were clear. His fast breathing wasn't because something was blocking his airway and his heart doesn't have any problems. A blood test finds that he has hyperglycemia. Hyper meaning high. Glyce from ancient Greek glykis referring to glucose or sugar and emia meaning presence in blood. High sugar presence in blood. It wasn't just a kind of elevated blood sugar level, it was so high that doctors presume that CG has new onset type 1 diabetes, the type that's caused by pancreatic damage, not insulin resistance that can develop later in life. They presume he's experiencing an acute illness because of it called diabetic ketoacidosis. Keto referring to ketone, a chemical that's formed in the blood due to the fact that the body has metabolic derangements. Acidosis, referring to a disorder of the body resulting in a flood of acid floating around in the blood, and diabetic meaning that all of this is coming from a problem of how his body handles and responds to sugar or glucose, bringing us back to hyperglycemia. Because CG is 16, he's considered a pediatric patient. Hypoglycemia this severe doesn't happen suddenly, it takes hours to days, meaning that the body has had some time to adapt in the setting of diabetic ketoacidosis. If everything is corrected aggressively and too quickly, overcoming those adaptations suddenly could do more harm than good. But this is a problem because while DKA needs to be treated slowly in a patient of this age, CG doesn't have DKA. It looks like he does at admission, but he doesn't. Salicylate poisoning, which is what he has, needs to be treated quickly, and the treatments between the two are completely different. Precious time can be wasted if the medical team doesn't find this in time as they start him on insulin that slowly infuses into him. Insulin is a hormone that's naturally released in your body after a meal. It gets the body's cells to absorb the sugar and nutrients from the blood. It works because his blood sugar becomes normal again over the next few hours. But the time has been lost now because CG starts to become confused. He doesn't look well. The salicylate poisoning from that tube of cream rubbed in between his legs is getting worse. Another blood test finds that he has low bicarbonate presence in blood. But what does this mean? Bicarb is a base. It's one part of baking soda known as sodium bicarbonate. When we breathe air in, our body wants the oxygen from that air so it can produce energy and function. When we breathe air out, our body puts out carbon dioxide same carbon as bicarbonate. The body wants balance. If he has low base presence in blood and the opposite of base is acid, then he should have a lot of acid in his blood, except that same blood test finds that CG's blood is a little bit more basic than normal. This tells the medical team that something other than ketoacidosis is happening to CG and they need to figure it out quickly. Skin is not the same across your body. The skin on your palms and on the dorsum or the backside of your hand are very different. You can feel it. You can see it. Scrotal skin is not at all like the skin on your hands and your arms. It's thin. There's an abundant blood supply going right to this external sac of skin and muscle. Applying a cream that's meant to absorb into the area where you apply it will likely absorb a lot when applied to somewhere thin with an abundance of blood vessels like the scrotum, meaning methyl salicylate applied here can absorb right into the bloodstream. There are structures adjacent to the scrotum that will likely absorb the cream as well. In a small science experiment, the scrotum was found to absorb creams rubbed on it at a rate 42 times more than when those same creams were applied to the forearm. If CG rubbed an entire tube in between his legs and that tube is 30% methyl salicylate, it means up to 55 big tablets worth of aspirin absorbed into his body. Just six big tablets can start to cause problems in adults. When you take medicine by mouth, it goes into your gut and then absorbs into your liver where a large percentage of it is immediately broken down. This is called first pass metabolism and explains why medicine taken by mouth sometimes will have higher doses than their intravenous formulation because IV goes directly into the blood circumventing that first pass. CG rubbing Bengay on his scrotum means that the methyl salicylate absorbed directly into his blood, a large portion of it not getting broken down by the liver first. So the dose is even higher than if it were taken by mouth as it starts flowing around his body. This explains all of his problems. 
Salicylate is a toxin of the mitochondria, powerhouse of the cell, by disturbing energy production. Fats, which are used to produce that energy, are disturbed in this case, allowing for glucose, which is also used to make energy, to spill into his blood in huge amounts to the point where doctors suspected he was having a diabetic attack, but he just didn't have diabetes. As the energy production is disturbed more and more by the huge amount of salicylate in his body now, the mitochondria keep working harder and faster, but nothing gets produced. If nothing is done about this, more and more salicylate absorbs into the organs, and there's no way to pull it out once it's in. It causes the lungs and the brain to swell with fluid. Because salicylate absorption isn't reversible, the brain will expand and crush up against the sides of the skull, causing permanent damage. The fact that he's becoming confused now means that his brain is starting to become affected. Heat and acid start spilling into his blood, causing acidosis. His body tries to compensate for this by breathing quicker. Carbon dioxide, when it's in the blood, increases acid content. Because we breathe carbon dioxide out, breathing faster and harder will suppress acid levels in the body, explaining why his blood was basic while he had low bicarbonate presence in blood, but only for a certain amount of time. The medical team, recognizing this blood abnormality, order some more tests, and they confirm that he has high salicylate presence in blood. When they asked him if he had some contact with some kind of medicine, he was embarrassed and he didn't want to say. He was partially responsive, so he may not have been able to say, even if he wanted to. But one of his friends blurted out that CG did in fact rub a whole tube of Bengay on the parts in between his legs. Young men are well known to rub things like Bengay and Tiger Balm and Icy Hot on their scrotum, either as a joke or as a challenge or just however young men tend to operate. There's more recent reports of men applying it to the region for other purposes. A general rule of thumb is to not apply anything to your scrotum if you don't need to especially if it contains medicine. Water and soap when you need to wash the area is fine. Whether or not this particular pain relief cream will make you infertile if you've done this before, I suspect it's not likely. There's people documented to have passed from doing this. In one prominent case, it was a girl, high school athlete, who applied copious amounts to a large surface area. From what I understand, she did not apply it to the equivalent structure in between her legs. Vaginal mucosa is highly vascularized and is a direct in to the bloodstream too, but she applied an amount enough often enough to get high salicylate presence in blood significant enough to cause the end of her life. If you're a man or have biological men's parts, deliberately applying copious amounts of this cream to this area, you're putting yourself at risk of a poisoning that can become deadly because of how much can absorb through the scrotum. This is the kind of poisoning where you can go to sleep because you'll be fine for a while and then suddenly you just won't wake up. After days in the hospital, a lesson learned about not rubbing unreasonably copious amounts of medicine on sensitive parts of the body and care from a medical team that was diligent, CG was able to make a full recovery. This video is comprised of parts from two different cases done this way to teach about salicylate toxicity, mixed acid-based disorders, diabetic ketoacidosis, and dermal absorption of creams and ointments. There appears there could be a rising incidence of salicylate toxicity from this route of administration for reasons that I described earlier. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourself and be well.